Hello Stampers, I'm Kelly Atchison at stampabove.com coming to you from Menasha, Wisconsin. I am an independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up. I have a great treat for you for our Feature Friday video. Today is August 23rd, 2019 and I am excited to tell you that I have a brand new online class that goes live today. It is using the Dino Roar Suite. Now, you have seen me make a few cards with this gorgeous paper. We also have the Dino Days stamp set and the Dino Dies. Holy cow, there is a whole bunch of dies here. Now, rather than feature a card today to introduce my online class, which is what I usually do, I'm going to show you how to make an adorable box so that if you get the online class from me, you will have a box to put it in. And this is going to make a fantastic gift or just a really cute box to hold your cards. Let's flip the camera around and I'll show you how to make one. The first thing I'd like to do is introduce you to the sizes of cardstock that you're going to need to make this box. And one thing I recommend is to cut everything and then you can stamp along with me, push pause if you need to, rewind, watch it again, whatever you need to do to be successful in making this box. So the first thing I've got here is some pretty peacock cardstock. I chose that because it is one of the many colors that is included in the Dyna Roar Designer Series paper. So I've got two pieces here. Both of these are seven and one sixteenth by six and eleven sixteenths. Now that sounds like a really odd measurement. So in case you are a little measurement impaired, <laughs> I'm with you there because sometimes I feel like I am. When you are measuring sixteenths, every little tiny notch on your ruler is a sixteenth. Okay, and then I like to kind of count them in twos. So I go with the bigger notch. So there's a little notch, bigger notch, little notch, bigger notch. So I go two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. Eleven sixteenths is one notch right before the three quarter inch mark. Okay, and of course, one sixteenth is just one notch after your inch mark. I hope that's helpful. I know I've struggled with that in the past. So we've got seven and one sixteenths by, a, I'm sorry, seven and one sixteenths by six and eleven sixteenths. Two pieces of that. That is the outside of our box. The inside of our box is seven by, whoops, it looks like it goes this way, seven by six and a half. Easy peasy, right? Okay, then we have two pieces of designer series paper. Both of these are five by six, and also two pieces of cardstock that coordinate with the designer series paper in Old Olive. Both of these are one inch by six and three quarter. Now, I'm gonna bring in my paper trimmer here so we can do a little scoring. Now, if you get confused by which pieces are what here, your outside of your box is going to be just a tad bigger than the inside. So I know these two pieces are bigger than these two. Those are the ones I'm going to start with. This is the outside of my box. And then I want to start on the 7 and 1 16th inch side. So I'm going to make sure this is the, this is the 7 and 1 16th inch side. That's going to go against your base on your paper trimmer. We're going to score at 1 and 1 16th. So I like to move it over this way, 1 inch and just one little notch past the 1 inch. And we're going to score that. Now this is going to be the top of your box. Then we're going to turn it to the side and we're going to score two sides. And those are also scored at 1 and 1 16th. So there's one side. Now I need to score this side at 1 and 1 16th. Okay? So we've got a score line here, one here, and one here. Easy peasy. We're going to do that to both pieces. Those are our two pieces. Now we're going to take the inside of the box. The inside of the box 
we're going to score it one inch on three sides. We've got two pieces here, and we're going to start on the long side, which is the seven inch side. Yep, this is the seven inch side. We're going to score at one inch, and then on both sides. Okay, so here's the top or bottom, it doesn't matter, we can flip it around, but we need to do one inch on three sides of this piece. So one, two, three. And we're gonna do the same thing here. Make sure you're on the seven inch side, I am. And I'm going to score at one inch. And then again and again. All right, there we go. We're done with that. Now we're gonna bring in our designer series paper. This is five by six and we're gonna score at 11 sixteenths on the long side. So, this is the six inch side. This is the longer than the five inch side. So put the six inch side against your baseboard. We're gonna score at 11 sixteenths and that is one mark before the three quarters. Okay, so one little dash before the three quarters. We're gonna score and we're gonna do the same thing on the other side, 11 sixteenths, okay? So this is what we have on our designer series paper, okay? Do the same thing to the other one. We'll fold that over, and then we have our band, these two pieces. We're going to score one and one sixteenth of an inch from both ends. So one inch plus one little notch on both ends. Now once we get this done, it's all about putting your box together and embellishing it to make it absolutely fabulous. One and one sixteenth, okay? So that's what we've done here and here. Now, I'm going to move this out of the way, and we are going to burnish all of our folds. And I'm just going to speed up my camera so you don't get bored and fall asleep on me. There's no sleeping and stamping. Now, when we get to these pieces, Again, I know that two of them are smaller than the other two. We're going to take our paper snips and we're going to snip up to that score line and then we're gonna notch out a little piece like that and a little piece like that. This is just gonna make our box fold a little nicer. And you're gonna take the notch out of the tab part. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, I'm gonna do that to all four of these pieces, so bear with me. Okay, there we go. Again, I'm gonna feel this out. I'm stacking these together to see which one is the outside. The bigger one is the outside, so I'm gonna grab that one first. And whoops, we're gonna burnish all those edges and make sure they're nice and crisp. Okay, here we go. Here's our outside of our box. I like to do a dry fit first to make sure that everything's going together nicely. And it looks great. Now, one thing, one little piece of advice I can give you. If you notice, all of my edges are going this way. So I don't wanna get to the top and have this edge come this way. You want it to also go that way. That's gonna keep your boxes looking nicer and this is gonna be the front, whereas this is gonna be the back, okay? I'm gonna add some glue. Now, if you wanted to stamp up your box, you would certainly do it right now before you put it together. I am not stamping up my box. We're gonna decorate it with designer series paper. Okay, so see how I'm stacking it here. Again, I'm just gonna give it that dry fit. I wanna make sure it's nice and square. 
And then you can take your bone folder down in here and press that nicely. Make sure you're stuck good on the sides. Okay, that looks really good. And now for this part, you're gonna notice that you have two tabs in here. You can certainly have cut one of those off, but I figure it just adds a little more stability. So I'm just gonna glue them together. Then I'm going to put some glue here and some glue here. And again, this is gonna go down. I'm gonna make sure that this tab is going the same way. It's coming this way. So this one's gonna also come this way. Put your glue on this tab that's sticking up. Don't put it on here because what if you, this doesn't go all the way to the edge, you get glue all over. Just another little tip. And again, just square your box up as you're doing this. I'm going to stick my hand down in there and get those tabs stuck down. That way they won't cause interference on the inside either. Okay, there we go. This is the outside of our box. Now we're going to decorate it with our designer series paper. But first, I'm going to grab our pretty peacock scalloped linen ribbon. And isn't that just gorgeous? I absolutely love this. I'm going to take a piece... That's about, I'll measure it for you in just a second here. You can just wing it too. Um, this is about five and a half inches long. And I am going to add this to my box. Now, I'm going to also stabilize it with a little mini glue dot and reinforce it with some tape because you don't want this to come apart and people are going to be pulling on it. Okay, so that's right in the middle. And then I'm gonna bring in some tape. And this is just gonna help keep that ribbon in place. And then we're gonna bring it around to the back. And again, I'm gonna put another mini glue dot on. Make sure that I'm in my camera frame here so you can see what I'm doing. And another piece of tape. Put your hand in there, push it down good. Okay, now we're ready for designer series paper. And our designer series paper, again, I'm just going to do a dry fit here. Make sure that I've got it scored properly. It looks great. And again, I want the tabs to go the same way that the tabs on here went. So these tabs are coming around this way. I'm gonna put this one on first and then these tabs will be coming the same way. So we're gonna add some liquid glue. And you could certainly use tear tape for this, but I find that the liquid glue works really good and it gives me some wiggle room in case I need to move something around, especially with boxes. You want boxes to be very um, square meaning the edges need to be squared up good. You don't want them coming apart. So I'm gonna push this designer series paper, oops, it's sticking on me already, all the way up to the top, just like this. Put your hand in there so you can kinda push it down good. Oh my gosh, isn't this cute already? Yeah, okay, I get so excited. Here comes, and I'm not putting a ton of glue on here, you guys. You don't want to put a lot of glue on because it'll be a sticky mess. Now, I'm going to hold this up, and I'm going to kind of come in here. I want this to be, to line up really good with the paper that's already on there. Okay, and especially down here at the bottom. There we go. I kind of smushed it up a little bit. go and I'm going to push it down good get those sides sealed down all right then we are going to take these strips and we're going to add those and again the tabs should go the same way so this is the back oops look at that's not sticking very good right there now it looks good okay this is the back I'm going to add glue right here and we're going to kind of put that in the middle of this 
Designer Series Paper Layer. Does that look like the middle? Looks a little high. Let's pull it down just a tad. There we go. And now I'm going to add glue to the sides. And then this one, whoops, hang on to it for a little bit. I get so anxious. Then I'm going to do a little bit of glue on here. Now, I'm going to line this tab up on the side first before I push this down onto the front of my box. So you want to make sure that these are lining up. That's really important. So here we go. Now I'm going to add my glue here. Because you want it to look neat and uniform, right? You don't want it to be kitty wampus. There's your redneck word of the day. <laughs> okay, there we go. Now, this is the front of my box and the outside of my box. Now we're going to do the inside the exact same way. So I'm going to whip this together and I'll be right back. Now before I glue this together on you, I want to show you something. I've got the one and a half inch circle punch and I'm going to bring that in here and I am going to center it and punch out half of a circle. Okay, now I'm going to bring it in down here and do the same thing. All right, now on this piece, I want to use a much bigger circle. So I brought out my frame lip that's about two and a half inches and I'm going to die cut half a circle out of this. I'm going to take it to my Big Shot and I'll be right back. Okay, there we go. Now we have that two and a half inch circle cut out of there. This, by the way, is from the Layering Circles dies. Okay, now I'm going to put this box together and I'll be right back. Okay, exactly the same way that I did the other one. Now we're going to decorate this. I have already die cut a lovely lipstick scalloped circle and that's the little dots that are in this designer series paper. That's how I came up with the color. And I used the layering circles. This is a whole set. It comes with scallops and plain. And then I've got the stitch shapes. This is the biggest one in the stitch shapes dies. So we are going to stamp a dinosaur. I don't know what this dinosaur is called because I'm kind of dinosaur illiterate. Not the worst thing in the world, right? <laughs> I've got pretty peacock ink here. And I'm going to stamp my dinosaur. Then I'm going to come in with some old olive and stamp the spiny back. And the really cool thing is we have dies that will cut these all out. So here is our short little stout dinosaur and here is the spine. Now, little tip for you. When you're cutting out the spine, you want to put your images up to this edge right here and leave a white space here. And I'll show you why in just a second. I'll be right back. Here's our little dinosaur, and here's the spine. Now you're going to take that, and you're going to add your glue along this white edge here. Bring your dinosaur in, and that little spine fits perfectly. Isn't that just the cutest thing? Look at how cute that is. Yeah. Okay. We're going to stamp our greeting on here, and I think I want to stamp with lovely, li I'm lovely lilac, <laughs> lovely lipstick, and my little dinosaur is going to go, well, I've got a smudge right here, so I'm going to see if I can cover that up with my dinosaur, and I can, so I'm going to put my little friendosaurus 
right there. It says, thanks for being a friend of Saurus. And I'll tell you what my idea is with this little box. Um, here are our Dynaroar enamel shapes. And I think we definitely need a couple of those. Hang on. Got my take your pick tool. Let's get our dinosaur added with some dimensionals here. Oh look, <laughs> recycling paper. That's good, right? Yeah. We're gonna add our dinosaur first. Then we're gonna figure out what we're gonna do here. I think it would be really cute to have one of these leaves. Where'd it go? There it is. Oh, these are self-adhesive, so that's really nice. And I'm just gonna put one of these leaves right here and then maybe a couple of these. Do one right there. Oops, it's not gonna come off now. I pushed it down. There we go. Maybe one right there. And one up there. Isn't that cute? We're gonna put that on the lovely lipstick layer. Oops, I got a little bit of glue right there. Hang on. I don't want that to get on my project. Just that little bit of scallop peeking out from under there I think is just adorable. Now make sure that I've got the front. Yep, my tabs are going to the back. Here comes Oops, I have one more thing to do before I do this. I almost forgot to. Now, we can take this ribbon and wrap that around too. Let me see what that's gonna look like. Yeah, I think I like that. Okay, where'd my mini glue dots go? Right here. Now you can make your box as fancy or as plain as you want. There. there we go. Now I'm going to add some more mini glue dots because I don't like my ribbon sliding around on boxes like this. So I'm just going to put a few more mini glue dots right in the middle. And that's gonna help keep my ribbon secured. Oops, that's not really in the middle, is it? I think it'll be okay. And then one, oops, don't stick it down to the paper because that'll be a disaster. One more right there. So I'm gonna pull this around and it's gonna secure it on all those little mini glue dots so it doesn't slide out of place. Here's one right here. And then, ouch, my um, elbow is healing where I wrecked on my bike, and it's giving me these little shooting pains. I'm gonna take one more of these, put that on my ribbon. Hopefully, it sticks, yep, to that, not my finger. Okay, now I'm just gonna come in here and make sure that those are stuck down good. They look nice and straight and even. And here comes my little label for the front. Then we're gonna put our box together and I'm gonna tell you a couple things that I came up with to use it for. Oh my gosh, this is just the sweetest, isn't it? Okay, there we go. Now, the online class has eight cards and a bonus card for a total of 12 cards. These are all the cards in the online class. No, I'm sorry, <laughs> for a total of nine cards. Eight cards and a bonus card for a total of nine cards. And these are all going to fit. Let me see if they're gonna fit. Yep, they're gonna fit in my box. Look at that. And here we go.
I'm getting stuck over here on something. Let me pull it this way. Um, there we go. This is substantial, you guys. How cool is this? I absolutely love it. Now, this Dinah, Dinah Roar Suite, oh my gosh, this is the perfect thing to make for gifts for young mothers in your life or neighbors that have kids because you can stamp happy birthday in almost every one of these cards. Thanks for being a friend of Soros. And then on the inside, happy birthday. Or um, the other greeting is your rawsome, rawsome. And then happy birthday on the inside. The other greeting in here is I love you this much. It's more than it looks. Another great birthday card. Get well card. Um, thinking of you card. Thank you cards. Young mothers need these. Um, give them to your, your kids to use for birthdays that they go to. And if you put them in a box like this, this makes it such a wonderful gift. Now, if you, I'll tell you how you can get the online class for free. If you order the suite of products from me, you can order it on your own or you can fill out the form that's going to be on my blog. There's going to be a link to fill out the form and I will order it for you. I'll bill you through PayPal and you can pay me before I put the order in. Um, or you can get this class for, I shouldn't say or, you can get this class for free when you order the suite of products from me. And that includes everything shown here on page 99. If you order this suite, it's $75.75 plus tax and shipping. If you want me to order it for you, the tax and shipping and PayPal fees will total $93. Or if you join my team as a discount shopper, this is one of my $20 classes. You can get all of my $20 classes for free as a discount shopper on my team. Yay! Or you can pay me $20. There's a $20 value here. You get nine different card ideas. Each one comes with an exclusive video tutorial, photographs, and written instructions. So it's quite a deal. Let me know what you think. Leave me a comment. Give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. This is like the cutest little box. I hope you will make some of these. I hope you will love my online class. And then I have a whole bunch of cards to show you. Here's a few of the cards that I have made using this bundle. You can find those on my blog. Here's another one. Isn't that just cute? I love the mango melody with these colors. It's another one. This uses some of the other linen ribbon. Now in this suite, you get, whoops, you get the denim ribbon, which you could certainly use for your box also, and it is used on many of the cards. I, sh I don't know, several, let's say several. Super, super cute little ideas. This is just such a fun stamp set. And it doesn't have to be about kids. I mean, who isn't gonna get a little smile if you send them a card that says, I could send my friends, my grown up friends, thanks for being a friend of Soros. How cute is that, right? So there we go. I hope you enjoyed this box. If you would like to place an order, you can go right to my blog here. You're gonna have an online um, ordering button. Click up here, that'll take you to my blog. There's an online ordering button in the right-hand column. Use this host code if it is current. If it says it's not current, there'll be another host code, but I'm pretty sure this one will still be current on Friday. I always appreciate your orders. And if you do not have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love to earn your business. We have a brand new holiday catalog coming out on September 4th. I can mail that to you if you pop me an email right here and let me know your address. Also, tell me, do you need the annual catalog to go with the holiday mini catalog? Because I can send both of them to you. And please don't forget to tune in Sunday night at 7 p.m. Central Time. I will be doing a Facebook Live class, and I don't know what I have up my sleeve yet, but I'm sure it's gonna be really fun, right? There's always lots of laughs and giggles. You will find my Facebook page
page right here. Just do a search on Facebook, you'll find me. Click the like button, give me a thumbs up, and the following button. That way you'll get notified when I'm live on that Facebook page. All right, you guys, have a great weekend. Once again, thank you so much for taking a little bit of time out of your day to spend with me. Bye-bye.